we're going to cover about what is Docker, right? We'll also cover about how to install, how to install Docker. In case if you have not installed, we can install tonight. Then we'll create a complete step-by-step -step Docker image. So we'll talk about Docker image. So the way it works here, first we need to talk about Docker architecture. And Docker architecture has small, small component. The first component is Docker client. So we'll talk about it, relax and enjoy. Those who are having a mic problem, you can buy any special thing or you can just, you know, let Harish know. He can give you a gift. But if you're using online class, you need to have some devices and all. Otherwise, you are 50 person. <laughs> I, you can listen to me, but I can't listen to you, right? So we can happy to provide you gift. We have a lot more in a Schamburg office. But make sure you have good machine and all because this type of thing, you require bi-directional communication. It's not a theory which I can talk and you listen and you understand. We need to do hands-on. And if you're stuck somewhere, how, how would I know, right? So it's important we use the right tools for the right job. Right, so Docker client, and then we'll talk about Docker daemon, or sometimes we call Docker host, we call Docker daemon. <clears throat> then we'll talk about Docker repository, Docker repo. So Docker repository is very important part. So we'll talk about how Docker repository works. We'll create a new account here. So we'll talk about that part also. After that, we have to learn about various command. Docker has a various command. So Docker commands. There are three terms very often used, and I want to make sure you understand. Docker file, Docker image, and Docker, Docker container. Now, we have to do various lab in order to understand this concept because it's theoretically you can just understand, but practically you can do it and you will learn it. So we'll do various labs. So we'll do lab, maybe around five labs we'll cover, okay? Then there are beautiful concept called Docker Swarm. Anyone knows about that? Docker Swarm, anyone? Sarah, you can unmute yourself. Huh? Sorry, go ahead. It's more like the clustering version. Very good. Very good. So it's a container management. Container management. So we'll talk about that. And there is another concept we're going to talk about is called Docker <coughs> Compose. Now, who knows about Docker Compose? It's okay to participate. Otherwise, you know, I will not enjoy because to be honest with you, I created a fresh material for you. I'm super excited. Eight hours I invested already. But if you don't speak up, I lose my energy. So everyone should participate because this is one of the best content I used in 2008, first time. And trust me, the day I presented this thing, from onwards, we all converted <laughs> all our thing on Docker images. So it's a very important topic. So what is Docker Compose means? Anyone? So Docker Compose is one of the most important thing is called multiple. We like to run multiple containers. Multiple container orchestrations. So orchestration, easy language deployment. And that's why you are taking this class. The reason you are taking this class is about this, how to do deploy for Docker. Now, the way this works is a little bit history. Many of you nowadays use called Kubernetes, right? But before Kubernetes, the Docker was independent service. And before cloud providers started giving you what you call elastic container service or you know certain kind of container service, Docker used to have its own family, Docker, Docker Swarm, and Docker Compose. This was one of the most popular thing, and it was very hot in the market that time in 2008, because when it came in the market, people loved it. So now the question is, why do we study Docker? If I don't study Docker, would I be able to do my work? Can I do without Docker all my work? Yes or no? 
I mean, you need to create the container. I don't know if there is any other service beside the Docker which can create the container. So first question, thank you, Viral. I like everyone unmute yourself and participate that if you really want to learn this class next two hours, I can tell you, you don't have to worry, go, go backward. If you're not actively participating, you're just listening. So make sure you participate because there are a lot of questions, concerns will happen. You can easily learn if you participate. So first, again, question is same. Do I have to have Docker in order to work in a real field? Can I do without Docker? Yes or no? Yes. I can work without Docker. I don't need Docker. Before 2008, 2010, knew about Docker and everyone was happy. Docker become popular in 2018 where Kubernetes and all become like open source and people started using Kubernetes. So Docker become instantly popular because Kubernetes by default, they call one native, native client. Kubernetes loves Docker. So that's why it's in 2018, it becomes significant popular. But before Docker, people used to do work. Many company does work without Docker. The question is, what is the importance of Docker? Why do I really need Docker? Right? That's a million dollar question. Why do I study Docker? If I don't study, what am I losing it? What value I Docker provides? Any suggestion? What value it provides? What problem it solves? Anyone? I think it is a base. Like you kind know, of base, yeah. Yeah, where you create the container and after that you can you can run it on like Kubernetes. Uh huh. So let's all very that. good. Very good. But first of all, we don't have to use word Kubernetes in the entire class because Kubernetes and Docker has no connection. And I'll explain later how the connection connections are established. So first of all, let's think about, let me draw the picture here. So here, Docker, when I search Docker, you will see these pictures in the Google. So when I say Docker, and I search, if I do ship it, you will see this picture in the in this everywhere, right? This is what Docker started. So what is Docker means? So it's a kind of container. So the history started this way, that people in, you know, different part of the world, like let's namesake China, Japan, India, they want to deliver the item to USA. Now they all do different, different type of manufacture, different, different type of manufacturing. And all those manufacturers, they want to deliver, which we call ship, safely and effectively. Safely and effectively. And they want some kind of promise that if it is right, working and good product, which I have here, if I put in a container, and then if I use this container, and if I move it around the container, Whatever the way it is designed, the way it is working here, it can be refrigerator, it can be TV, it can be humidity fire, it can be dehumidity fire, it can be plastic, it can be a light bulb, it can be cloth, it can be anything. If I can fit it in the container, the container can move anywhere. It can go to USA, England, Australia, Germany, anywhere, and it should go without any difficulty. Means my furniture, my light bulb, my cloth, my cattle, anything which I move in Docker container, right? Docker means container from source to destinations. It will be smoothly transferred. So this is what the mantra was. Docker mantra was very simple. If you build it, so manufacturing, if you build it, means you manufacture it. Then you package it. Then that is kind of brown box. And the packaging, if it's a different, different packaging, it will be very hard. So we package rectangle block. So we package a rectangle box and put all those boxes in a container and then container, I can ship it. And when I ship it, I have peace of mind that whatever I have packet, package that and put it in container, the container moves along with the ship. It will go to the destination without any damage. 
So that concept started with that, just like our furniture, just like our parts, just like our supplies comes from different country, packed in a container and then ship it moving, it will be delivered to your destination. Now, philosophy is very simple. Please understand. Now, if I'm a manufacturing one, please pay attention. If I'm manufacture two, if I'm manufacture three, and I can have N manufacturers. They all manufacture different, different items, but they pack it in a small box, big box, small box, big box, small box, big box, they package. And they don't know which container they will get. It will be a green color or it can be blue color. It can be orange color. It can be any color of container they get. But as long as container is there, they can start adding their items in container. This one, this one, this one doesn't matter which container because container has almost same shape and size. And then once container is, they, they load into container, then container is now parked in a maximum capacity through our, our ship. So where you can, if it is a rectangle, you can easily connect the container and you can use the space effectively. And that spacing part, you are using a gigantic ship and gigantic ship now take this container and then and shell it in the ocean and deliver to different different destination so these was the motivations about our docker now the concept is very similar so let's understand the manufacturer is nothing but application developer application develop, development team one team two team two team three, team four. The team can be doing database work. Someone may be doing microservice work. Someone may be doing like a, some web development work. Someone will be doing uh, web server work. They are doing different, different work. And then they deliver a, a, some kind of package. Normally they deliver a package called JAR. JAR stands for Java Application Archive. Or they package as a VAR, Web Application Archive. Or they do as a Python program. Or they do Java program. They do as a, as a shell programming, pulp programming, they do various type of coding. But as soon as they put that in a container, they know it. If it is working in my local environment, it will work when it goes to the destination. Just like my furniture, once I pack it in a proper packet and if I put it in a container, the furniture moves from point A to point B and when it goes to destination, it is as is condition, no damage. Same thing, if my application is working in my local environment, if I package it properly and if I put it in a container, then its container moves, my application moves and when it goes, when it goes to the destination, it's going to work without any difficulty because it has its own container. It doesn't damage and these each container each container has independence they don't disturb each other they can they can co-locate it but they are in isolation form they're co-located but they are in isolation form and because they are in isolation form it's a peace of mind and the the main the gigantic ship which we call is nothing but machine it's a laptop desktop or machine so one machine can have many containers just like one ship can have one like hundreds of you know container same thing a machine can have many containers and inside the container you will have your own applications that application will have a nice beautiful environment and that's guaranteed it's gonna work because it's a it's an environment just like a, a fish has aquarium a fish within aquarium as long as aquarium is moving fish will not have any problem same thing as long as container is moving application within a container will have zero problem so the mantra is very simple you first build it you first build it so you build it first so first build it once you build it then you do packaging and when you package you put in a container and that container you ship it so that's the ship it and once you ship it wherever you ship it it's gonna run it's gonna run and it's gonna run so mantra is very simple build it that's the first step which we're gonna learn how to build second 
package we'll learn how to package third ship it which we'll know how to do shipping and fourth how to do run so docker concept is very simple if i build it in my local environment if i package it properly and if i ship it no matter where i ship it as long as it's in container it doesn't matter it goes to australia it goes to england or usa it's going to work it's going to work and it's going to work because container itself has its own environment and i do not need to worry about if the machine which i'm using has a mac machine or linux machine or windows machines or cloud machines or desktop machines laptop machine i don't need to worry about as long as your machine support the containerization environment then this container will work and inside container your application definitely will work so far any questions uh, can we call virtual machine as a container uh, kind of like that but i'll explain that good question hold for a few minutes but okay. so far whatever i explain any questions so far so in python for example i believe you create uh -huh. um, virtual environments through different projects uh -huh. so in this sense instead of creating a virtual environment for each project that you have you would just create a container right so let's and very good thing let me explain that same token so i think a very good question first of all so think about you this is a brian sorry uh, mike here so mike has a one computer and mike is writing program python program so he's writing python program let's say he's using version 3.7 so mike writes a program and so far what happened mike is giving program to me so i have 2.7 python do you think it will work say yes or no simple. no no simple you know participate guys if you want to learn participate otherwise you want you're not going to learn trust me this is not the concept like baby thingy this is a very advanced topic the only way you will leverage is in case if you still want to not understand what i'm talking about this is not a baby thingy topic type top topic look at this docker developer salary no one will pay you this much salary if you're just white. Okay, this is huge salary. Remember, lifetime people don't get it. So you need to be talking. You need to be talking, okay? It's not a simple thing, right? We are learning very advanced topic. More you ask, more you're gonna learn. Otherwise, I will complete my class and you won't even have any clue. No one will give you a single penny if you are not understanding concept. So make sure you participate actively, right? Coming back to my answer. So here, it's not gonna work. So what mistake I made? What mistake I made? Why it's not working? Because you What's, made uh, version 3.7. You are missing Okay, now you're talking. So my setup has a different version, which is my machine. But destination machine has a different version. So now, Docker say, wait a minute, why would we do? Why would we take a risk? Let's do a container. Your program, and your environment, your program and environment together, ship it. Now, if I ship it, do you think it will work? Say yes or no? Yes. Because I'm giving everything. Yeah, because it has all the depend. All exactly. the dependency. I'm giving not only program, I'm giving you runtime. I'm not giving you fish, I'm giving you water and entire aquarium I'm moving. So container is not just a program, but it's entire runtime environment. And funny part, let me repeat, you may love it. Mike was using, Mike was using Windows machine, but he want to deliver Linux. So he can create a Linux environment inside and he can install Python version inside and he can have his own program all together. He can deliver. Now he can deliver wherever guaranteed it's going to work. Because whatever he was doing here and it was working, he tested, he verified, and once he wrapped it up as a packet with the operating system, with the program, and what is the application together, once he packed this thing together, that is the bubble, and the application is going to work in the bubble, guaranteed. No matter where the bubble is going, guaranteed it's going to work. So it's a peace of mind now. Peace of mind, my program will work no matter where it is it go to azure google cloud or aws cloud or my laptop or your laptop or desktop or any corporate network it's gonna work 
गुड थिंग और बैड थिंग से गुड थिंग और बैड थिंग इफ इट्स पीस ऑफ माइंड ऑलवेज इट्स गुड वर्क वट यू थिंक गुड थिंग Good thing. This was a pain. This was a pain. Why? Because before, what people used to do. Please understand the concept. What people used to do, like example, I'm a developer, and I can have many developer. A company can have fifty teams, right? Company can have fifty teams. Please understand, fifty teams. Now each teams, each team might be using Python. Just an example. This guy is using two point five. This guy is using three point seven. This guy is using three point eight. 3.9 and they all are delivering all in one server one server right they are putting their program here now in this server you are using python now you have 2.5 you have 3.7 and you have 3.9 do you think that they will clash in one machine because you have one machine you are trying to install you are trying to install three different version do you think it will clash yes or no yes it will clash it yes. will clash why because some library which will not compatible now what was working here is not working here and people are fighting there are 50 people 50 teams how many people will fight hundreds of people will fight and there was no solution at all so docker say wait a minute why are we fighting docker say whatever the environment he is using why don't you ship it the same environment and each one have their own version of python their own version of everything so they all can Simultaneously work in one machine without fighting each other, and it's peace of mind. I don't have to install. Listen carefully. I don't have to install because installation come along with the application. Everything comes along. So whatever it you have in your machine, it comes along with me. And if it comes along with me, it's a peace of mind. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. It's gonna work. And now the DevOps person. devops person doesn't have to install different type of version he doesn't need to do different verification qa person doesn't need to verify why because if qa has verify here then it's guaranteed to work zero zero qa activity you need devops activity is reduced why because if it works here it's going to work there is no question asked it's going to work no qa activity required because you do thorough activity before you package thorough before you package it once you do it it's going to work it's going to work and then you can you can put it in one machine or you can put it this same applications same application you put it in hundreds of machine all hundreds of machine identically it is going to work identical so, wow that type of guarantee was not provided before docker say that you build it right you package it you test it in local environment and once you Totally satisfy, then you ship it, and when you ship ship it, the package you use is called containerization, and that container move with all thing operating system, environment, and your program everything together. So you do not have any dependency. It means it's going to work, and these versions are not talking to each other. They are completely isolation. They don't need to know each other, so they don't interfere each other. It means in one machine. you can have 50 plus python a uh, different version no problem at all so the doctor docker solves version problem operating system problem unnecessary you know validations problem and compatibility problem all problem docker this docker resolve that so nowadays if you are not using docker people say are you kidding <laughs> if you are not using docker there is no world in the right now there is no devops world exist right now that docker is not used yes viral yeah so we knows like uh, container goes with all the dependency like mm -hmm. operating system programs and everything i'm just wondering how come they are like so light very nice very good very good so first of all i think you understand the benefit of docker remember mantra build it package it ship it run it when you run no need to worry about it it's going to work so it's a peace of mind now uh, there are concept let's understand first of all virtual machine let's talk about i have i have created a forum by the way because you know the way i do is i created a forum just today itself i created because i thought it, you guys can love this thing and you will learn more if i have specially designed this thing so i created an entire forum for you you can see today 
seven hours are invested by the way so here you go so the question Thank is you. let me go here i'll show you yeah this one so the first thing is you all know virtual machine in virtual machine your machine has a hardware your hardware is here like cpu memory right and hard drive cpu memory and hard drive in virtual machine you use hypervisor and then you notice that in when you create a virtual machine you are using operating system operating system operating system so if you are using windows it takes almost 1 gb if you are using linux you might be using 500 mb and other so whole you are using whole operating system in virtual machine and hypervisor gives you system level system level virtualization system level means hardware level so virtual machine was i would say beginning level this was the first incarnation everyone started using that the problem is because you are having complete operating system complete operating system so complete operating system taking a lot of memory it takes more cpu more hardware so this require hard drive each virtual machines are bulky because it use a lot of memory entire operating system you install now in container you might see the concept here infrastructure is still there but you are not using hypervisor but you are using operating system which is in our case windows and you are using container engine which is the daemon we call it daemon daemon means a small background program it's a kind of small program that program ni nicely works with the operating system nicely work with the operating system and this operating systems you have here this operating system the bare minimal kernel bare minimal kernel you install bare minimal kernel the kernel goal is to just talk to this and this it that's all it talks to this it is not doing anything just talk to the container engine bare minimum bare minimum means you don't need like example if you are traveling if you are traveling from your house to somewhere else you're not going to take entire house but when you are moving your apartment to another apartment you are taking entire house but when you're traveling you take one or two bag right but the reason you are taking one or two bag because you are traveling for one month or like that but if you're traveling for one day you will take less you know less item with you same thing container take only kernel which is one tenth of the operating system so this machine stop and start take minutes stop and start take minutes container stop and start take less than second one or two second so you can see that first of all it is 60 times faster because here it takes minute here it takes second why because it's so lighter this is so lighter the memory requirement here you have in gigabyte or you know or megabyte here it will be kilobytes to megabyte means the memory footprint is tiny if you have one machine please pay attention if you have one machine you might be able to run four virtual machine parallel and your machine will run out of resource if you have machine you can run at least 10 plus container without any difficulty and they will work like a charm and your machine will have zero problem and you can have more even uh, containers why because containers are tiny virtual virtual virtualization but the virtualization container does at application level you might notice that application level so container is also doing virtualization but application level the virtual machine does con uh, virtualization at operating system level an operating system level you are doing virtualization so it's bulky while you're doing application level virtualization so it's pretty lighter questions any other questions um <clears throat> When you said uh, shipping the container, mm -hmm. meaning we are accessing from remotely? Or? Yes, very good question. So, see, think about that. I am writing a program. I write a program in my machine. So, first, I create a program here. And then I say, you know what? Now, this program, this is the program. This is the environment. And this is the operating system this program needs. And then I'll create a container out of it. And I give it give it to you. Now it comes to your machine. And if you use, it will work just like that. So this is called shipping means. I give you everything. Program, environment, and operating system. 
So when I give you, it's called shipping. Once you put that item in your machine, it's just gonna work. Because you, are, you don't need to install anything. You don't have to configure anything because I have done everything. I build it, right? I test it and then I package it. When I package, I put all necessary things together. So it's gonna work. And that is called shipping. Now let's say Viral wants that. So I can say, I already have, I already have containers. I can do duplicate copy of that. And I can give it to Viral. I can give it to Mike and Sarah is not speaking, but I'll give Sarah too, right? I can give Julian, right? And they all will enjoy the same ride. So you build once, you package once, and you create a copy of that. It becomes template for you. The template you can create as many times as you want, and they all will work. Because I don't depend on your machine. I don't depend on machine. So your machine can have different operating system. Others can have different operating system. It just works. It just works. Questions. Uh, okay, I got it. And uh, one more question. So this what kind of packages needs to be there? Uh, companies will request. Correct. I'm coming to that. But so far, okay. are you guys with me? Okay. No. I think so. What is, so usually your applications will have multiple components like a database, a web server, maybe app mm -hmm. server or something. Mm -hmm. Those are each going to be separate. So you would probably have three different containers, right? Yes, very good question. So first of all, let me draw it. I like to draw it because trust me, I, I will be honest with you. If you if you are taking such kind of class and if I were you and I'm just focusing everyone, I like money, by the way, in case if you don't like money, I love money, okay? I wanna target such kind of job and such kind of job, you don't need to be hands-on. Let me repeat, you don't have need to be hands-on. You need to be concept wise concept wise i'm sure you have taken narendra's class you are taking my class i do not do a single line of coding but my concept is super make sense my concept is super if your concept is not super if your concept is super this is nothing let me repeat this number is nothing these are i would say easy language simple dollar your concept is high you can go sky is a limit so make sure you keep asking question because trust me as an instructor i teach but when you ask question, I become a professional and I explain in detail. Teaching, I can go through the slide. I do have a slide. You see, I can easily use this slide and I can start teaching, but you will learn only the slide. If you ask question, you will learn. And there is humanly impossible to read your minds. You are 13 people. I cannot read your mind. If I were you, and if I'm not very clear, ask question, okay? I'm very good in this aspect. I started in 2018. And then I educated many area, almost all my project, we are using 100% containerizations. But you keep asking me questions. Trust me, I know sometimes you feel awkward. Hey, why should I ask question? Then it will be a monotonous. I will only talk. And trust me, if I talk, I'm gonna talk 20 slides done in one hour. And you say, man, how am I going to get 100,000? You're not gonna get 100,000 because you just got a high level understanding. Unless you ask question, I will not open the details. Right, because I know a lot more, but I cannot teach all in just one hour or two hour class. So keep opening me and ask questions. So my, my question is very simple. So let's talk about my question. So Mike is saying, hey, I let's talk about first of all the concept. <clears throat> I write a program. So this is my program. So this is my program and this program required database. So this is another program. This is the data, but let's assume this is a Python program for time being, and this is a MySQL, right? So MySQL also, I have two choice. I can keep Python use MySQL. So I can use container one and container two, or I can create a compose. What do you call compose as a one com container, compose. So compose means you combine together as, a, <coughs> as two, as a one container. So when you ship it now, you're shipping together, but and everyone needs to get both Python and MySQL. If somebody say, I want only MySQL, then it's difficult. So it's a good idea to have a con container separately. So if somebody only need MySQL, they can use it. If somebody need Python, they can use it, right? And then if somebody need both of them, then you create a compose and then take use them, which is called leverage. 
use them and create another container out of it. So you have a choice. You can have container. You can have more another container. You can have more container. These are layered. These are layered approach. So you can start with one container or you can have a bunch of container together and you can create your own container. That's a big container which will have a bunch of things. So in industry, most people are divided applications into three chunk. Three chunk. One is normally UI. UI means presentation layer. Normally people use Angular, Node.js or React like that. They use UI. Normally they use one container out of it. Then they use Python program, Java program, C Sharp program. They use service layer, which we call web service. Those who are using AWS class, REST service, SOAP service, the service layer. They create a container of that one also. Each service is one container. So if you are creating, let's say, a particular you know, service like example, product, add product, view product, delete product, you can create a service as a container. So product is a one service, customer is a one service, order is a one service, vendor is a one service like that. And then you are using database. So database also a one country. So this is three tier architecture. But if you combine as a compose, then you have one, one container where you have compose, which is all together, all together, which is if you think all the time, listen carefully. If you think all the time, I need to have all three containers together, then compose will be better all the time. But you can say, no, sometimes I may need a, one of them, right? So you can think sometimes I need one of them. Sometimes I need a, this one separate. Some, then I would create separate container and have, have the host operating system. So host operating team means, means destination. They individually bring the container and then they, they, they have to do a little bit configuration they need to do. In that case, they can work. So you can create that type of setup and so I can deliver independently. I can deliver two of them. I can deliver three of them and I can configure the way I want. In that case, the destinations need to package. Think about assembly. So if you are buying like a furniture, sometimes you get a furniture with a box, right? You will have two, three boxes like, you know, brown boxes and you assemble that. Same thing you can do. So in that case, you have flexibility. You can have chair separately, table separately, and maybe other things separately. And you can assemble the way you want. Or you can use only table, or you can use only chair. It's up to you. So you have to understand what is the use cases. Compose will work or independent will work. My recommendation, keep it independent. So you can stitch whatever you want. If you create a compose, then sometimes, you know, it's a, it become a bulky and it's not reusable. The goal of the container is try to create a tiny, tiny, tiny container. So you can easily leverage it because think about the car. So car, the wheels are separate. The, you know, the, the steering is separate. The airbag is separate. Then, then they connect together. They don't put together as a car and only sell car. The parts are separate and then they reuse it. So container approach is very simple. Create a small, small, small containers. In our applications, like my application, I can say one team has approximately 50 to 60 containers. The reason they have that because it gives them freedom to leverage. You can have multiple versions, same application. You can say this applications, you can have same application. Please understand. You can say this was developed in 2003, same application, another container 2008, another container 2015. So you can provide various backward compatibility and you are guaranteed it's going to work. So it gives you that freedom. So having independent container is a good idea, but if you see always there is a marriage between two, three container, then you should use Compose. Good. Any other questions? Good. Okay. So now let's think about architecture. So there are a few things we need to understand. Architecture perspective, you need a one client. So your client, then you have a daemon. Daemon means nothing but engine, Docker engine. It's a background program and then you have rep, repo, repository. So if I, if I want to do something, I need a small software on my machine that called Docker client, Docker client. I need to install Docker client and Docker client understand all Docker command, all Docker cl command client will use it and it will go to engine engine will reinterpret and then translate. So you have to install client. That client will write a Docker command. It will go to engine for translation. Now the way engine will work here is client writes only command. 
So there are 20 plus commands are there. These are easy. We will learn most of all of them. So 20 plus commands and that's all you need to know about the exam. And you can also go for Docker certification also. It's not that hard. So Docker commands engine will interpret. So the way it will work is client only shoot the command. Engine will read the command. Engine has a couple of responsibility. Please pay attention. Engine has a couple of responsibility. Like, like, like example, client say I need I need repo. Repository has a lot of containers. Somebody has pushed it. So example, Viral knows what he's doing. He has pushed his container. Murthy has put his container here. Maybe Mike has put his container. In company, there are a lot of people has pushed their container here, or you can go to public repository. Public means Microsoft might have put, Oracle might have put, IBM might have put, or open community might have put some container. Container is like a, just like a prepackaged program somebody added. Most people are like really putting, adding those things in a, in a repository. So now the client say, I need container. Just an example, please pay attention. I need a MySQL container. Just an example, because MySQL is open source. So client say, I need a MySQL container, MySQL container. So Docker engine say, wait a minute, I don't have it. Docker engine say, I don't have it. So Docker engine will go to repo and say, do you have MySQL? It finds it. So then it will come to the Docker engine. Docker engine will store locally. And then it say, yes, I got it. And it give it to client. So first client get it. Now client say I got a MySQL. Now I need to run it. So first there is a life cycle. Please pay attention. So what you store in a repo is called image. Speak with me. Image. What do we call? Image. Image means like image. A freeze freeze version. It's a think about frozen pizza. Everyone understand? Frozen pizza. Frozen pizza in your refrigerator. It's a frozen. It's not useful. It's a frozen. At least I don't eat frozen pizza more often, but I heard many of my you know friends they buy Costco frozen pizza and they add it. And when I go to their house and say, "Oh, we have frozen pizza from Costco," ah, I don't want to eat, right? Because it's a frozen pizza. They tell me, but image is like that. It's a frozen. It's a frozen everything, and that image will come here. So once first thing is the image, you need image. So once it comes to you, then you can say, "I want to run the image." I want to run the image. So first you need an image, which normally you have to get it from repository. So you have two choice. You get it from repository or you create your own, your own repository, own image. You create your own image. I'm going to show you both of them. I'm going to show you both of them. So first you can get it from repository or you can create your own repository, but you have to, you have to have image. Image is nothing but remember I told you program, environment and operating system all together as a package form which is a frozen now that image when you say i want to run the image docker say okay the image will convert as a container that time it become a container now i want to make sure you understand the word here clearly container is a runtime container is a runtime but storage time it is image so storage time we only store image but when you run the program, when it goes in memory, when it goes in memory, it is container. From one image, you can create as many container as you want. From one image, you can create millions of container, which we call auto scale. So those who know the scale, auto scale, right? Scale up, scale down, or elasticity. You need an image. In AWS, we call AMI. In case if you remember that AMI. That AMI is image, it's a frozen aspect. And when you do scale 50, you are using that image and creating a 50 containers like that. So that's why when you run it, it comes in a existence. So pizza now eatable means you, when you warm the pizza, when you warm the pizza, it becomes a pizza. Otherwise it's called frozen pizza. We don't call pizza, frozen pizza. And when you warm it, it's become a pizza. And once the pizza is warm, it's eatable. Same thing, run container is now usable means you can use runtime container. Image, you cannot use it. It has to go through the microware to become like a real pizza. So same thing, image has to run. If image run, if image run, then it becomes container. And then container is useful. 
client user applications only use container but container cannot be created without image either you buy it or build it there is no other choice you buy it or build it image and from image you create a container so example if i want to buy it i can go to marketplace and i can buy some uh, container image and I, if I need Oracle, I can go to Oracle company and say, can you give me container? And then they can give me container. I need to pay for that and I can use that. So first image, second is the container. From image, you can create as many container as you want. Any questions? So the container is an image instance and uh, the class object analogy might work here. Mm -hmm. You're right. So you're absolutely right. So if you are comp comparing like Java or Python object oriented, image is the class or template and container is the instance. So from one template, you can create a many instance. I'm going to show you. Mm -hmm. Good so far. Okay. So now let me just go back to my forum. We need to respect some time here in forum. So we'll install in few minutes, but here is the situation. Okay. So after we have a container, it's ready to go to the ECS, right? Sorry, my mistake. Yeah, yeah. Though ECS part, we will not be able to touch here because that's a. No, I'm, just, uh, yeah. I'm just. But like, answer is yes. Curiosity. Yeah, answer is yes. And after they're like, if we have too many and we need a managed service, then it's go to the Kubernetes. I mean, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm coming to that. Okay. So first, are we clear with the Docker client? Docker client only issue command. Docker desktop is the one which we are going to install. So your machine, your machine, Windows machine, your Windows machine, we need to install Docker desktop. And I know some of you are using Mac, right? You Mac have, you have to find another engines. Definitely there might be engine available. I'm not a Mac guy. And, uh, and then Docker registry. So this is your registry. So you, you can install Mac also if you have, but again, you have to do a little bit of mathematic model. Uh, I have not done installing a Mac any ever, but installing in a Windows is quite easy. Uh, Linux also is easy. So I'm assuming you can follow Linux base and it should work. But registry is a Docker hub. So just like a GitHub, there is a Docker hub. So we have to create a new account here. So we'll play around that part also. Okay. Now, first thing what we need to do, we need to go to Docker hub and create an account. So let's get started. So <clears throat> everyone, search docker hub like this docker hub and press enter and let me put the link in the chat so you guys can make it easy Shar, we have the homework on that to create a docker hub account and to uh -huh. install a uh, uh -huh. desktop if you have done it man you're my friend okay. <laughs> you're my friend okay. yeah if yeah i have done it, done it. Yeah, I saw only two or three people student have done. So I email, uh, but in case if you have not created, just create an account, it's a free account. Yeah. Just create people on phone. If you're just, if you're done, just give me thumbs up. So at least I know that accounts are created. Adam says, yay, I done, good. Thing. Nice, nice. Quickly create the account. It won't take long time to create an account. You can see how many years account my my his, history. You will see that you can see four year hours, four years, five years, six years. Do you see that? So this is like a lot earlier. I created in 2018, as I said before. The slides that you have in the forum. Docker mm -hmm. desktop 300. These might be all the slides, right? The Docker now desktop is 425. Is that? Sorry, could you repeat again? The Docker version that shows on your. Oh, slides. yeah, don't worry. We are, we are okay. going to use latest. This is okay. like a static okay. slide. So yeah. we are going to use latest. Don't worry. So we're going to install and all. We're going to do thing. But I'm hoping everyone has Docker Hub account. Please do so. It won't take more than a few minutes. But, and again, uh, this is lifetime access now second thing in case if you have forum access i'm going to put the link in the chat because i kind of expedite this way that you, you all can get faster response so through chat i'm going to put the link of our forum i added inside also in your homework and in your powerpoint in google class so you have access to this forum 
So here in the forum, there is a Word document. So if you click on that Word document, there is a link here for download desktop. So you can, you can follow the flow. There are two steps involved. You need to, you need to first enable the features in your Windows machine. Features on your Windows machines. So in your Windows machine, there's a feature, which is, I'll show you features on. Some of your Windows machine has a hypervisor V or some, some of your machine will have Windows hypervisor. You need to check and enable that. Once you enable that, you have to download this Docker desktop and then you follow the installation part. Okay. So those who do not have feature enable, I'll show you how to do. So I just search a feature, feature on and off. You just search feature, you just feature and then features on and off. So if you search feature, feature turn on and off, and you will see that I have different name, Windows, uh, here you go. You can see here, Windows Hypervisor Platform. So I have Windows Hypervisor Platform. I click on that, and then I just restart it. So it automatically start installing. So just enable the hypervisor. You need to enable that hypervisor. This is nowadays Windows come with hypervisor. So you don't have to install separately. Old version, we have to install separately. Now it comes with latest and greatest. So you install hypervisor and then click OK. So it will install the hypervisor. Once you install that, it may take maybe a minute or two. Uh, yeah, if it require, please do reboot. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it will require reboot. And then once you complete that, you may need to join and try to download this link. You can go there and download and it will get you the exe file like this. It will give you exe file like this and then you follow the next, 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 next and install Docker desktop. So this one is nothing but Docker daemon or we sometimes call it Docker engine, Docker daemon or Docker engine. So you do need to download and install. So please follow the flow. May not take more than a few minutes, but this one installation does take a little time. So how many of you installed Docker desktop? I did. Oh, you did? Oh. Awesome. Mike say yes. Good. I did too. Very good. Very good. So three members. What about others? I'm hoping you are able to install uh, Docker. This link has proper. I follow the same steps. So whatever Narendra has documented, I follow the same. I just install in my machine uh, because my uh, office machine has, but this one I'm from home. So I install it. Did not take long time, maybe five, 10 minutes. Please There's install There's some it. kind of a compatibility Sorry. issue that some of the container companies didn't like Docker anymore? Uh, actually, I personally do not know that the Docker, they do not like that. Actually, the Kubernetes and all, the Docker is the first citizen. Docker is actually a first citizen, almost every company. There might be a, some reason company might be using other, but um, if you think about, you know, a, 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 you know, what do you call Amazon, or you think about Azure, or you think about uh, Google, they all love Docker. They all love Docker because first it's simple, it's easy, it's been market for many years, it's been tested. However, there are many containerization techniques or uh, technology available. So it's not, it's only one Docker is in the market, but Docker is the most popular one. I did not find any special issue with the Docker as a, as such so far in last six, seven years, but there might be a reason some company might be using other containerization technique, which is possible, but Kubernetes 100% Docker is the first citizen. And majority company use, if they use container, the 99% they use uh, Kubernetes. So it make more sense to use Docker because it works naturally with the Kubernetes. There is a partnership there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm also having some. Mm -hmm. Sorry. 
Could yeah, you ask? I'm also, I'm also having some compatibility issue with my Windows version. What is the issue? It says I need uh, a Windows 10 professional uh, or above. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is the prerequisite. Uh, it's yeah. not a compatibility issue. It's the prerequisite because some some Windows uh, there's a prerequisite. Uh, because Microsoft, in that case, you may want to download hypervisor separately. There is options available because I used oh. to have older version where you have to download separate and that, that creates a hypervisor separately. You need to download. Another thing people have problem is the BIOS. If you are using HP machine, if you are using HP machine, they in a BIOS, there is mm -hmm. a one thing called VTX. VTX is not enabled. So you have to enable that. Okay. Uh, so when you restart your machine, uh, you have to press F2 or F10 or F12, depend on which type of operating systems you have, but it does allow you to go to BIOS. And if you go to BIOS, there is a concept called VTX, Virtual Terminal Extension, enable. So you need to enable that. And this one is very important. Many compu com company, so sorry, computer does not have VTX enable except Dell. Dell has by default enable. So HP and I know other com others also have uh, VTX off. Some company, if you're a corporate com com machine, they will never allow uh, VTX by default enable because you can do damage also using virtualization. So they kind of lock it. Uh, so special permission needed for you know Docker or some kind of containerization technique if you're using. Okay. Hmm? Okay, so I'm hoping Many of you have downloaded this desktop, and if you download, its installation is quite easy. Follow the flow. You download the exe file, and you go through next, next, and then you just follow that instructions, as I said before, and you will be able to successfully install that. Uh, more informations I have in my forum. In case if you have virtualizations enabled, disable, you need to go to BIOS, and you can enable VTX. I put it here and then other informations we talk about hypervisors this is for feature on and feature off so you can do that and if you, you just download the from docker hub and then you can go further and you install and once you install you will it will take like this time uh, version doesn't matter which version you use old version will work as well and when you're successful it will create a shortcut and in order for us to verify you just need to click on your search button is just a CMD, search CMD, CMD, and then click on command prompt and just search Docker. If you press Docker and if it gives you menu, means Docker is successfully installed. Let me know if you are able to see Docker like this. Then are you able to see on command prompt Docker? Yes, I am. Perfect. I'm impressed then. You're ahead in the game then. Well, I have to enable VTS, uh, uh, VTX uh, when I <laughs> run the, when I did the homework. So, uh, that, but other that, than that, I didn't have any problem doing the homework. Very good. Very good. And good news about it, once you install, it will work. And you can also do Kubernetes practice. So when Narendra teach you Kubernetes also, you can do that. So you do need to install Docker. And when you install Docker on your system tray, you will see fish icon. Fish icon, you can see like a whale icon, right? And if you click on that, you will see options here. So if I click on, uh, I think it disappeared. Anyway, so um, you will see the icon and that icon through, you can enable, disable like that. You can do that. You can play Kubernetes also locally. You can play around command. I would highly recommend that you install Docker desktop because you can learn both without any difficulty, Docker desktop, and you can learn Docker Kubernetes also, and you can play around. Most of the most of the practice you can do with the local because if you use a, a elastic Kubernetes services, you will really not learn much because it hides all those complexity and so you need a kubectl and you need a command. So those, it's very easy if you work on a uh, window, uh, sorry, Docker desktop. We learn, me and Narendra, we all learn this way by installing Docker desktop, so it's easier. There is another thing called mini cubes available, but Docker desktop is good, it's simple. 
So now I'm hoping you have installed Docker. If you have installed, I would say congratulations. And if you have a question, please ask. So right now I'm able to run Docker and I can see it's working fine. I have installed that. Now, in case if you are running, if you can search Docker also, you can search Docker and you can see Docker desktop. You will see Docker desktop. So when you click on Docker desktop, during installations, during installations, I'm not sure you got a login screen or not, but you can log in. Uh, so it will ask you to log in. And I would say log in with your hub. So use your username and password, which you use uh, for your Docker hub. So whatever account we created for Docker Hub, you see I'm right now logging. So it will allow me to pull the images from, uh, from Docker repository. So right now you can see I'm, I'm logged in. So if I'm, I'm right now logged in, so when I log in, I can pull all the, my images and all, I can easily get artifactory access and all. So you can easy, you can get a hub access and all. You can see all those things if you log in properly. So please understand, you do need a Docker Hub account, which is this one. Whatever I see here in Docker Hub account, during installations, if I log in, if I log in, then I can see the same view in my local machines. So you just need to log in. Okay. Now, if you are doing like example, if you're in Docker and if you say Docker, login and you press enter see right now i'm already logged in so i do not have any problem but uh, try uh, what you call those who are already installed and you configure username and password see if you can do login and if you say login success then are you able to do, see dot login success uh, one moment, I'm just taking notes first, so mm -hmm. to ensure that. Uh, okay. You can also do login while you're starting here. So you can also click here and you can do account setting, whatever, or login from here also. Logging succeeded. Perfect. Viral, Mike. It's installed, but it doesn't want me to, it's not letting me sign in yet. It doesn't drop down on the Linux side. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. Misha, you are doing good. Let me know if you are running with the issues. So, Tushar, why uh -huh. do I get login succeeded? Is it because I'm logged into my Docker Hub? Yes, because okay. your your hub, if your machine is a hub, so you are good. Okay. Um, Misha, which language you are writing, my friend? I am not able to read your language here. <laughs> uh, seems like it's a different characters. Okay. So I'm assuming all of you are able to download and install. Viral, what about you? Well, I'm already done. Oh, you're good. Okay, so let's yeah, begin that. <clears throat> so first of all, I'll, I'll continue so that good thing about that you already have installed. So if you install, you can see Docker info. If you do Docker info, so you can see the version. So most likely you will have latest and greatest version for Docker info. And you can see the, all the details about your Docker. So if you go all the way up, you will see right now your Docker version, which is in my case is a 24.06 here. So you can see right now. And whatever the Docker build I use here. So here, this is my info. Compose is version here. So all informations about my setup, I can see that by Docker info. And if you have any container image, you might not have, but I have right now. So you can see I have 12 
and one is running, 11 search top, I have eight images and server version is 24.6 and the storage driver they're using overlay. So again, just for information only. So now we're gonna do step-by-step -step commands and play around this exercise. So please understand, first of all, we talk about Docker gives you isolations, robot system, build one time and test it and it works. There are certain competitions are there for Docker's that our competitors are rocket comes closer so rocket is also kind of closer many companies use rocket also so it comes closer but i personally see docker is still a winner if you compare in google you will know that now we talk about docker mission it's very simple docker mission is very simple build once and then ship it when you ship it you can run it and anytime anywhere no matter where you are which operating systems you are using doesn't matter it's going to work, it's going to work, and it works. It's very fast, it's simple, it's easy. And there are many reasons people use. I have a small video. Uh, this video I prepared a long time back, but almost 64,000 people have watched this video. And I got a lot of thumbs up. So if you watch this video, please do give me thumbs up. This video I prepared when I was, before COVID, I prepared this video. Okay, now Docker architecture. So Docker architecture, we are client, host so for our case we are both in one machine so we are in one machine in a real life you can have a client here and you will be pointing to the engine so if you are using ecs right in that case you will have client on one machine engine on another machine and repository on another machine so your repository which is the docker hub and docker host we are in the same same machine and our client so there are two type of commands you will do often so first you are going to create either you are creating image related command image related command docker image either build image or create image or you are running command for container type type of command container so either you are doing your building image if you are building image or you are executing image and creating a container so most of the time you are running commands based on image or container now all your client command will go to Docker host. Sometime we call Docker engine, sometime we call Docker daemon, and it goes to repository and see if there is a existing image available. If yes, it will download and it will download the image and put it into knowledge of Docker host, means it's a local repository it will build. So next time if somebody run that command, it will pull from here, it will be faster. So Docker maintain the, all the list and all. So whatever you do, it kind of expedite that work. So like example, I need a MySQL. It go here, get it. Next time if I it, it will get it from here. And when you run it, it create the environment for you here. So every image, when you run it, it creates a container and you have a way to list the container, your way to list images, your way to remove the images, your way to stop container, your way to remove container. So we're gonna learn those commands step by step also. Question. Any question? Yes. So, uh, daemon, host, and engine are used intermittently here, right? They are synonyms in this case. Yeah. So, Docker, desktop, host, Docker, daemon, Docker, engine. These are intermittent. I use the same. These are same. Okay. Docker, engine, Docker, desktop, or Docker desktop host, they are same. Normally people call daemon, Docker daemon. So this is what normally people use word, Docker daemon. The reason we are using host because we install Docker Windows host, but otherwise they call Docker daemon or Docker engine. That's what they will use. And the same with uh, repo, registry and hub, right? Yes, they are same. Okay, yeah. but we install a piece of software called Docker desktop. Uh, yeah, they are both client this. and the host uh, in this yes. case, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. This is what we install is a development environment perspective. We install yeah. development perspective you install. But if you are going for, let's say, production environment, you do need a Docker engine or Docker daemon. Docker daemon understand what to do with image to container, what to stop container. So daemon, so you only talk to daemon. Through command, these are command. Through command, you talk to daemon, and daemon knows what to do with image or what to do with the container. So you directly don't talk to them; it goes through daemon. So it's very important that this engine is receiving receiving your commands and then execute accordingly. Okay. 
Now each each section I have explained here, so play around and learn that. As I said before, you start with the image first, and then then image one when image runs, it becomes a container. So let's understand. So the way it works here, there are three building blocks. First is the image. The second is the container. So with that we talk about image and then container. Now, image, if you want to create your own image, then the, there is a special file we create called Docker file. So we call Docker file. So Docker file, there is a certain like 10 commands are there. Through using 10 commands, you write a small instru instruction here, which is called recipe. You write a recipe and then you say Docker daemon, Docker daemon, read this recipe and create image for me. So this is what you create your own image. We're going to cover that. So you write a Docker file and you create your own image. Once you create an image, then you can say Docker daemon, use this image and run it and create a container. So first step, you use Docker file, then go to Docker daemon to create image. And second step, you ask Docker daemon, use this image which we just built it and run it as a container. So that's what it does. Most of the time you will be doing that. Either you are creating image and then you are executing the image which become a container. Everyone, once at least in once in a life, they have to create image. So if you are working in a software development team, they will create an image every time when they do build. So I think some of you already gone through Jenkins. If I'm not making it set, right? So Jenkins, what it does, it gets the code from Git, right? And then you might have used Maven, right? To build it. So when you do Maven, you build it. So mostly Maven will build jar or var file. And then you install plugin for Docker plugin. So you create a, you have a file and Docker plugin will create a image for you. It will create an image for you. And once you have image, you can also deploy that through Jenkins. And this way you can deploy that. So you use Jenkins for entire CICD pipeline. So just like Maven has a palm.xml file, just like Maven has a palm.xml file to build that, same thing, Docker has a Docker file. So every application will need one Docker file. Every application need one Docker file to create the image. You can create image with the documentations. You can create image with database. You can create image with the program. You can create image with the web service. You can create image. You can create image the way you want. And that image which you create can be executed. If the image is executable, then it becomes a container. Yes. Any questions so far? So far, so good. Okay, perfect. Sorry, uh, what is the Docker file? Uh, it's a recipe. It's, it's like a recipe. It recipe has a ten commands. Using ten commands, you you provide instruction to Docker daemon, Docker daemon that I need an image. Docker daemon only understand this ten command. Through that ten command, Docker daemon read this line, recipe, and it will create an image for you. So if you have a problem in this file, then Docker daemon can, cannot create the image for you. Make sense? So we'll learn how to create the Docker file. Now, let's say you don't have a Docker file. Then there is another options. You can say, you write a command to daemon, hey, pull, pull image. So when you say pull, Docker daemon say, I don't have image here. So Docker daemon will make a call to repo Docker repo and get this whatever image you ask it will pull and it will make for you and then you you can create container out of it. So when you say Docker pull this thing, so Docker daemon say wait a minute I don't have it. I will get it from from you from Docker Hub. It will download it put it so now it's an image is ready. Then you can say Docker daemon run this image and when it runs it becomes a container. So you have two ways either you pull from outside world or you create your own image. So far, so good. Good. Okay. Any questions so far? Awesome. Now, 
let's continue. So we talk about you know, client, we talk about desktop, repository objects. And now this is like, these are the commands we will be using. This is this, using this command, using this command, you create an image. This file which you create is called Docker file. Please pay, remember this naming convention. The recipe file is a Docker file. That file, you are gonna give it to Docker daemon. In this file, you're allowed to use only this command. So this command you use here in Docker file. Docker daemon will read this file and it will create image for you. So image only created through Docker file. So Docker file through you create image. Any application developer who wants to use Docker, they need to have a Docker file. So every one, every applications, if they are going to create an image, they need a Docker file. Now Docker file is pretty simple because it has only 10 plus commands. Now, if you are having only one container, you do Docker file, please understand. If you have one container, you do Docker file. If you have two container, you can create separate Docker file. But if you have three containers, separate files, so people will get tired. Why? Because too many Docker files. So what people do that, they combine one, two, and three instruction and create a compose file. Compose file, Docker compose file. Docker compose file use some of the command and it has a little bit additional uh, instruction, but compose file can create instead of one image, two image, three image, compose file can, you know, create a multiple image together. So compose means more than one. And Docker file normally do one at a time. So if you want to do one at a time, you do Docker file. If you want to combine and create, you, can, you do compose file. My suggestion is to do Docker file. Don't do compose because if you create an independent container, then you use properly. If you do combine, then it's kind of, you, you lose flexibility. So it's very important. Now- Shouldn't we see the pull command in the list here? Yeah, I have, I have everything. Give me a few minutes. Okay. So this is what I was talking about. Docker file goes to uh, build and build will create the image and then image runs and create a Docker. So you have three components, Docker file, recipe, Docker image, and Docker container. From one image, you can have many container. These are called scale. So when you say, I want to have a replica, sometimes we use word, word replica, and sometimes we use word scale. They are kind of interchangeable. If I say replica three, it means three container from one image file. And scale means how up you're doing. You can go up and up. But here you have to do scale. So there's a call scale. And the, through using scale, you can create multiple, uh, multiple containers. So here we talk about using, uh, using Docker file, you create a Docker image. And using Docker file, you can create a many container. Container is a virtual environment. So in this container, you have applications, you have environment, and you have operating systems all together as one. And one machine can run many containers. So if you have one machine, you can have same container multiple time, uh, or you can have multiple different, different containers also. So you can run that. So now let's do our first exercise. So first exercise, we're gonna run this command and see if our setup is there. I hope everyone is in the forum. If not, I'm gonna put the link in the chat so you can follow the flow, so you can be more comfortable by yourself. But right now, I'm gonna give you a command. Don't use dollar, dollar is just a learning purpose only that I added dollar just to show you that you run a command. You run a command uh, on a prompt. You just copy and right click. So you're saying Docker run, hello world. So what will happen? Let's understand. So Docker run, run means I want to run container. So what uh, da, this command will go to Docker daemon. So Docker daemon first will check, do I have image? Do I have image? If yes, then it will use this image and it will create a container out of it. We are done. But let's say there is no image. Then Docker daemon say, wait a minute, I don't have image, but let me go to repo. So it go to repo and from repo, it will download the image for you. Once you download, then it will run and it create. So it download, it pulls, pulls the image. If it is not there, bring it here and it run. And whatever you have written in this, this one, 
you will see the message in that it will be hello world. So if you press enter, you will see hello world. So you can see I already have it. So it's instantly, it did not, did not pull it, but run, it creates, it run the container. So you can see Docker client contacted daemon. Docker daemon say you have a image, otherwise it will pull from hub and then it executed and now you got the output. So output is my hello from Docker. So this gives the idea that you have a proper setup. So you have a proper setup, which is what Docker is running in your machine, your proper setup means you do not have any problem right now. Let me know if you are able to run this command and you are able to see something like this. Yeah, I get, the, I get the message unable to find image and then uh, pull complete oh, okay. and then hello from Docker. Congratulations. So you are able to pull the image. Now run again. If you want to run again, use up arrow and run again. It will be lightning fast. Why? Lightning because it fast, doesn't yes. pull. It doesn't pull. And that's the beautiful part about this container. Which is indeed, very yes. fast. Right? Now, because you have image, now run this command. Docker, you write image and image is an ls. ls means list. So you will see, uh, just say image. Docker images, and you will see all the images you have in your machine. So you can just write Docker images, and you will see all the images. So you can see hello world you have in there. At least, at least it I have in mine. So Docker images, and you will see the available images. So far, so good. It's working or no? Yes. Okay. Now you can also do this way Docker container and LS. So you can see if any container is running for me, MySQL is running, but you may not have anything running right now. So just say Docker container LS, LS, Docker space container LS, LS means list. And you are saying, is there any active container? You may have empty, right? Yes. Yeah, it's empty. Yeah. Right. Now you can do use up arrow and say minus a, and you will see container which are there, which are not running. You will see those. So now you may see one container. Hello world. Am I right? Docker container space ls minus a. It will show you all the container which are running or stop or pause or in sleep mode, you will see all those containers. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Good. So this will give you idea that there are containers because you will often need this command, Docker image, which will sh show you the list of the image and Docker container LS minus A, which will give you all the containers. These are the image which you use, right? And these are the container ID. So they call hash sometime, they call hash ID. So this is the hash ID. And this is very important for you to know because if you want to run the container, please understand. So you have image and from image, you already created a container. So if you already have created a container, you can run the container, stop, you can, you can start, you can stop, you can delete container. You can do all those things you can do here. But if you said, if you said Docker, run, if you say run, then it will take the image from image. It will create a container and then it will do start. So interview question that what's the difference between Docker uh, run versus Docker start. So start is only one command. It just start, but at assumption that you have a container, assumption you have a container, run command does two step approach, take image, convert image to container and take container and then run into start mode. So it means run the container. So that run command runs twice. It create the image if it is not there. And if it is there, it will pick it up and, and then it runs it. So sometime we'll use run, sometime we use uh, start command because we already know, we already know the container is there. So we can start it here. So far so good. 
Now, every time when we start the container, we can list out the active container by this way, doctor container LS. These are, this will allow me to show the active container and this allows me all the available container doesn't matter is active or stop or exited. I will be able to see all the containers. Good. Now, Docker does, uh, when you see the hello world, when you run the hello world, there is a one special thing it allows you here. So if you run this one, hello world, it gives me the message, but it gives me something here. This one, please read here. It gives me beautiful concept called Docker run IT. IT stands for interactive Ubuntu. That's your image name. Please understand. It's a Linux distribution and name is Ubuntu bash. So you are saying, I want to run this command in this container. So please understand, it's pretty interesting. <clears throat> Here you say run this. So you are saying run this, <clears throat> run this container. You just say run this container. So in this container, as soon as it runs, please pay attention. As soon as the container runs, the container has some program, which is just like a main program. Main program ran and you get the result. Now here we are saying something different. So please pay attention. You are saying Docker run in interactive mode. Interactive mode means I, I want you to run Docker container and then give me opportunity so I can continuously interact with you. While this command run the container, run the main program and it automatically stop the container. So after running this, you don't have a way to interact. But here you say Docker run interactive means I will be interacting with you the once container starts, the container name is Ubuntu. And then you're saying run bash. So you're saying as soon as you run, you run a command, this command for me. So you are giving a command, you are giving a command to this container and, and making it interactive. So let's do it so you will understand. So you can copy this, right? Right click, I highlight that, highlight this and, and then paste it here and press enter. So what it will, what it will do, it will check image exist. If yes, it will use it. If not, it will go to repo and then it will pull it. Once it pull it, then it run. And when it runs, it runs in an interactive mode bash. So check it out. You press enter and now it's going to get take me to the bash. Some of you, it will download Ubuntu because you're first time because I already downloaded its bash. So you can see now I, I'm in a container. I, I'm inside in a container. That's pretty cool, right? Now I can practice my Linux command, but basic Linux command, not all command. I can do ls command. I can do date command. I can do, uh, I can do um, like example, uname command. Some command will work, not all command will work. Okay, example, I wanna do calendar. I can't do that. Some of the command won't work because it is a primitive Linux in your machine. So you can do all Linux practice if you want to. So Docker run interactive get this image and then once you run run this bash command so as soon as you run the bash command you got a prompt and you are you are in you are right now i'm inside the container and this is my container id so if you see here this container 69 so in that i ran my command and i have a container id so i'm inside just like each container has id i'm inside the container so i can play around which is kind of beautiful thing. I can install software if I want to, like example, if I want to install software, because I'm meant to, if I want to install app get and I want to install software, I can install the software also. So I can improvise my container also. And container will remain, uh, whatever I do, it will remain in the container. Ideally, you should not modify the container because container is supposed to be immutable. Container should be immutable because anytime you want to modify, you modify your recipe, which is called Docker file. Docker file, you modify Docker file. Docker file through you create image and that image through you run the container. You run the container. So container will run from image. So you should, you are allowed to log in through interactive mode. You're allowed to log into the interactive mode. You are in container, but you should not install here. If you want to install, you come back and you install from here. So once you install from here, it becomes a template. If you install here, then it's only available to you. If somebody use your template, they will not get the benefit. So ideally, ideally containers should be immutable. 
means you should not change it. You should make it, keep it, state, uh, what do you call, uh, read only. You don't want to make change there. Any questions so far? So if somebody asks, like in exam or interview, how can you interact with container? You use IT. In that case, it's interactive, interactive mode. So you're interactive mode. You're, uh, you're kind of now part of that. And if you want to come out, just write exit. So you can see that your hash sign will come out. So if you do exit and you come out. Any questions so far? So far, so good. Awesome. Let's move on. Now, so here we just ran this thing interactive mode and we saw that so it worked properly. Now, these are like a commands we have and I put a cheat sheet here. These are like more popular commands. So first let's understand the command docker run. So run means I have image and from image I want to run container. So that's what it is. Commands to start a new docker container from image. So docker ps. So ps means it will show me how many containers are running. So why don't you do docker ps. In your case, you may not have any, but you can see here, sorry. You may not have any, I have only one uh, container running, but if I have container running, I can see through PS. PS means pros process. So I can see that, and I can kill this, con I can kill this, uh, what do you call, container. I can stop this container using ID, or I can kill it. So stop is graciously, graciously stop, and kill means abruptly stop. So you can give a command and just kill the container. So it's up to you. But you can see Docker PS through, you will see active container which are running right now. We'll, we'll use it. So that's one. Um, you can also do Docker stop. Docker stop and this command to stop running container. So I can show you, I have my container running right now. MySQL we're gonna do in few minutes, but I have container, I wanna stop it. So I'll say Docker stop. And I will use this image ID container container. And now if I press enter, it's going to stop that container for me. So it stopped the container. And if I say Docker PS, I will not see anything now. And if I say Docker, uh, Docker container LS, I cannot see anything because there is no active container. But if I do minus A, I will see MySQL inside. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? How do you start again? I can start the same way. So I'll show you. I can use, uh, I first I can do container, right? Let's say if I want to start like that, then I have to, I have to use the instead of stop, I can just say start and I can use the container ID and I can start it. I'm going to show you that. So these are okay. container ID. Using container ID, you can stop, start or kill it. You can do also kill. The PS command gives you active, PS command gives you active um, processes, processes means container. And you, you can also, you can also get detail more about a particular process, just like a Linux process. LS command just give you a list. But if you do LS minus A, a you get the you know, uh, other container, which are the, which are not working and all. But normally, you know, those who are using Linux, it's a process, you running process you get. So you are listing all, running process, kind of similar thing. So if you come here, if you are coming here, so um, here, if you want to remove, if you want to remove, you use RM. So if you want to remove any particular container, you can just do RM. So if you do RM, you can remove particular com command, uh, container. Same thing, you can remove image also. And Docker pool gets you something from from repository. We'll cover that in a few minutes. And Docker, Docker execute, that is interesting. So if you have if you have certain thing like on your if you're a container and if you want to execute particular thing inside the container, you can run the execute command. So you can run a particular command uh, in a running container. So you have a way to run the just like we run bash command, right? We use bash command. So we can say, hey, run the bash command for me. It just when we ran this thing, actually a command you ran. So you are saying this command, you are saying I stands for interactive, T for tag, 
run this. So you are executing this command. So here using run you are running, but you can also do through execute command also. And Docker Compose we talk about, in that case you merge multiple container. This is only useful for your multiple container going to work as a one family. So example, if I say microservice and microservice has a UI, service and database and if you want to combine as a three together as a one service you can do that in that case you need to use command called docker compose i'm going to show you that as well any questions so far good Let's you mentioned go. kill uh, at one point is the same uh, as remove now uh, remove uh, please understand remove i see first of all i have image in my machine so when i said docker image ls if I do Docker image LS, I see all the images. But if I said Docker remove, please understand, remove image. So I remove that from my hard drive. Remove, remove from my hard drive. But let's say I have a Docker running. This image is running. So image is running. If image is running, it's a container. At that time, I have a process ID. So I have process ID. I, I ran that container. So container is running. If container is running, that time I can stop it or I can kill it. Stop it or kill it. I can't do remove. It won't allow me. It won't allow me to remove. Because if Docker is in, in execution mode, if container is execution mode, you have two choices. Either you can stop it or you kill it. If you kill it abruptly, it, it's going to kill. And if you want to graciously uh, stop, if anything is running, you want to wait for that and stop, then you need to do Docker stop. So kill just stop the execution aspect but remove go back to the file and remove the hard drive aspect aspect so anything it's stored in hard drive it's going to remove so next time when you come back you won't have anything on your hard drive if you kill it the running program will automatically stop stop kill is nothing but forcefully stop that's it but you still have container so you can start again you can run again but when you remove you remove the container or remove the image you lost that. So now you have to pull again and start. So you're losing the hard drive, hard drive concept. But yeah, see it like an task and delete. Sorry? See it like an end task and delete. Yeah, correct. If you if you are doing end task, like in, in your task manager, right? If you do task manager, right? And if you right click and say, I want to kill it, right? I end task, right? That's the, that's your kill. But you are you are not delete removing a Microsoft Office or Word or PowerPoint, right? But if you uninstall, that's called remove. Uninstall is called remove, right? So right now we'll do one exercise and then we'll take a break uh, quickly. I hope everyone has an account. So let's do exercise number one and then we'll take a break. So everyone has an account. So in this exercise we're gonna pull HTTP D, which is nothing but web server. So we are saying, uh, we are asking <clears throat> what you call Docker daemon, go get it this image. So this image, it will go and get it and download in your local machine. When you download, you will see something like that. For me, it won't show because I already downloaded. So you can copy this and right click. And Sorry, my mistake, why it's not coming. I thought I copy, no? Right click and I copy this and then you right click and press enter. So you can see it's 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 right now trying to get it that image. So it's gonna take time if it is not available. But you can see here pulling. So here you can, you can see that. It's a Docker pool HTTPD it is nothing but Apache web server. So it's a pulling this library and it went to all the way and this image is up to date. Up to date means I have in my machine. This is the image this is the image, image uh, easy language name, and this is your tag. So if you don't give, if you don't give after image, if you don't give a tag name, it will always take latest. But let's say if you want to pull a particular version, you can say colon, you can give a version name 1.0, then it will pull particular image with the version. So image with the version. So if you want specific version, you can also pull that specific version. And if you don't give a version, it always pull the latest. Did it work for you? Docker pool HTTPD? Yes. Okay. Now, if I do this Docker, right? If I say image LS, 
I will see that HTTPD available. And I, I pulled it long time back. So you can see here, I have HTTPD and this is available. Now, now I want to please understand, I want to execute the command. This is important and then we'll take a break. So I want to run the command. So I downloaded the image. Please understand image is different than container. Container is a run copy. I have not run it, but here I'm going to run. So I say I download the image. Now run it. D stands for detach means run in a background, run in a background because web server. I don't have to see that it's in the background. It's going to run in a background. So run in a background and when you run that container, you give this name. So whatever name you give, like example, I can say my Apache or my HTTP. I can say any name I can give. So you're saying minus D means run in a. Uh, so if you do minus I, it's interactive it means I will be interactive. It's a foreground. If you say minus D, it's a background detach mode. Now minus P means port minus P means port. 80 means this is your host host means your laptop or desktop and and then this port is your container port so container has whatever container has port you can write that and this is your image so let's understand so what we are saying here please pay attention it's important docker run so you run you, this is your image which we downloaded so you are saying i want to run this image in a detached mode in a background mode and when i run dash dash name I will give a name of my container because when I run I, that that run copy, I will give a name and I want to interact as a user. I want to interact. So when I interact, there are two type of way interact first outside world. So outside world, they will access this port. And when they ex they go to my internal, which is the web server, which is HTTP, which will be this port. So internal, there is a port. So I can have here 90 outside world internal is fixed because it's come part of the image i can't change that internal i cannot change but external i can change and i can connect it so here let's see here so docker run minus d name i give my name apache so this is my container name apache i can say apache one i can do minus p this is my my laptop or my desktop port and this is the container port the port where apache is running inside the container so let's run that so you will understand what I'm talking about. So just paste it here so you will see. Oops, sorry. I did not copy that properly. Right click, copy this and paste it here and press enter. So you can see here I already have Apache used because I already have a container with Apache. So I'm going to use Apache one. So I'll say Apache one. So what I'm saying, I'm creating a second copy. I already have Apache. It says that Apache is there somewhere. So you can see HTTPD. So I have HTTPD, right? You can see here HTTPD and HTTPD. Now I'm going to give name Apache one. So I give Apache one. You can, you can do Apache because for you it will work. So you can see right now this Docker is running and detach mode name is Apache. My port, my port, if I access 90, it will pass my request to 80. So right now it is running. How do I know it's running? So if I do this thing, Docker, Docker PS, you can see it is running. It is running right now. It is running and the name is Apache one. Give me thumbs up if it is working for you, Docker PS. Working? Yes, no. I'm not seeing the thumbs up, so I'm assuming you are saying something. Working, no working. Working. Okay. Okay. Now, okay. So now in this one, please understand. I'm saying here the host, host port will go to container port. So in order for me to test now, I need to go to this link, which I have local host, which is my machine and port 90, which I map it here. If it is working, 
then it my request will go to container and container will give me the answer. So why don't you right click here and open in a new tab? Work. And if you if you see that you will say it works. So right click on the link and open new tab. So right now this one is working. It means this is my machine, which is my my lap desktop. 90 is porting to container, container is listening at 80. And there is a page which is served here, which is it works. So this page which you are seeing here is not coming from my lap, my desktop. It is actually coming from container. And that container which we ran here, this is running right now. This container is running. So this container is serving. And that's container receiving my request through port 80, sending sorry 90 and sending to here. And through that it goes to Apache. Apache has this page that it works and you are seeing that page here. So you, you are running web server through container. Now you say, I don't know, I don't understand that. So let's stop that and see what happens. So you can say Docker, right? Stop, right? And You can you can stop that so you stop that and now when you stop it now if you refresh it so what happened you should get an error did you get an error because you stop that container so you pick that container id and add it here so you can say docker stop you stop that so now the container is, so container is in your machine but it's not running when it is running i was able to access that so if that is the situation let's start it so I install, I use up arrow and I can say start now. Start. And when I start now, if I refresh this page, it works. Make sense? So you can stop, you can start container, you can run container with port, you can change the port, you can change the name of the name of the container, and like that. Any questions so far? Yeah, question. Sure. So this uh, HTTP works on port 80, mm -hmm. but for only this container in my laptop, it's going to 90. That's correct? Yes. All web server in the world, all web server in the world works on 80 by default. Yeah. yeah. So this is the container receive request 80, but your machine will receive request 90. And then it called port port forwarding. So it is a port forwarding to 90. And from here, it is serving the page. So you are you think like it's serving from 90, but actually it port forwarding happened through here. And then this page you are seeing it works like that. So it happens only for that container, but remaining internet activity, I my laptop yeah. Yeah. receives yeah. from yeah. 80. Yeah. 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 Everything will remain as is only for these container interaction you are going through 90. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, now it's too late, so let's take a small break.